is worthy of your worship is worthy of your praise lift up your voice to him father we acknowledge you as our god we worship you we exalt your holy name you are the giver of life you are the reason why we are gathered here this morning thank you for divine protection thank you for divine provision thank you for the gift of life lift up your voice to him acknowledge the doer of every good thing in your life let him hear you loud and clear this morning lord i worship you lord i exalt you lord i magnify your holy name you are worthy of my praise you are worthy of my worship lift up your voice to him brethren that is the reason why we are in church this morning give him worship from a grateful heart lord i'm grateful lord i'm grateful thank you thank you thank you if you don't know how to pray just go ahead and be saying thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you everlasting father in jesus mighty name we have worshiped now today is prosperity sunday you will lift up your voice and say father in the name of jesus from today open a new door to prosperity for me and my family lift up your voice and begin to pray father open a new chapter a new door of prosperity for me and my family lift up your voice and pray father prosper me on every side open a new chapter of liftings a new chapter of enlargement of coast thank you everlasting father in jesus mighty name we have prayed now i'd like you to pray that prayer for someone close to you you lift up your voice and say father in the life of this your son open a new chapter of prosperity in the name of jesus go ahead and begin to pray a new chapter of lifting a new chapter of enlargement of coast Is that all you can do? Lift up your voice and pray. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Brethren, poverty is a cause. Let me tell you, sickness, disease, they are bad, enough trouble. But can I humble you? There are several sicknesses and diseases that are poverty-induced. In fact, the World Health Organization recognizes sicknesses that are related to poverty. 
And that is why I'm trusting the Lord for someone here. Every yoke, every chain of poverty that the enemy has used to, to hold you bound. In the service of this morning, my God will break such yokes in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and say, Father. Every yoke of poverty at work in my life or around me in the name of Jesus I command be broken go ahead and begin to pray I break every yoke every yoke of poverty poverty induced yokes I command them broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'd like you to pray this prayer. It doesn't matter what is happening in Nigeria today. I will not die poor. That's the prayer you will pray for yourself. Whatever God needs to do to separate you from the poor, Father, begin that work in my life today. Lift up your voice and say, Father, it doesn't matter what is happening around me. I decree with my mouth that in the name of Jesus I will not end in poverty I will make it in life go ahead and begin to speak those words over you I will lend to many nations Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. May I pray over your life this morning. The Lord will prosper the works of your hands. Where you are today will be the least you will ever be. Every yoke of poverty at work around you or at work in your life. I command them broken today in the name of Jesus. Very soon, there's someone here hearing the sound of my voice. You will become one of God's mighty divine treasurers. The Lord will use you for his glory. And your life will make meaning to your world. So shall it be. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father in heaven, I bow before you this morning. As your word comes forth, please breathe upon your word. Amen. Father, empower your word. Amen. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed. Amen. Set the captives free. Amen. Save souls like never before. Amen. And prosper the works of our hands. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Put your hands together for the Lord. Is that all you can do? Celebrate the King of all kings. And now go ahead and make a joyful noise to the Lord. The shouting side is the winning side. Can you make a joyful noise to the Lord? Amen. God bless you. Please recover your seats. A very good morning to everyone. I'm so happy to find you in church. Because you are here today, the Lord will do great things in your lives. In the name of Jesus. So quickly, um, I don't want to forget. I mentioned this to the 
workers and ministers when we're praying this morning, you know, preparing for the service. By the grace of God, you know, like we have done in past years, this year we'll be having the Festival of Champions 2023 in the month of November. If you're clapping for Jesus, you can do better. Um, now, we are used to hiring chairs for that program. And most of the time, we don't get enough. Because, you know, you have other events taking place, happening in town, and... Um, we find it difficult to mobilize, to get as much chairs as we want. So you find people sitting on the fence, you find people on the road. So we have said to ourselves that this year we'll start on time. And this year we are trusting the Lord that we'll have at least 50,000 chairs of our own. How many of you agree with me that it's possible? Let me hear you shout aloud, hallelujah. hallelujah. But now it depends on you and I. So I want to request that please every member of this church between now and November should give us at least one chair. Is that too much to ask? Please, um, you can reach out to the admin office. When you bring your chairs, we will find a place to keep them together, you know, before that time. It's important so that at least we are sure, even if we don't get chairs from anywhere, we have 50,000 chairs of our own. You agree that God will use you to make that happen, shout a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Esther chapter 6, Choristers, you can take your seat. Esther chapter 6, I'm going to read very fast. From verse 1 to 14. On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bictana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. And the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman was coming to the outer court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servants said unto him, behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in and the king said unto him, what shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted? To honor. Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of the one of the king's most noble princes that they may array the man without whom the king delighted to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Then the king said to Haman, make haste and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said and do even so to Mordecai the Jew that seated at the king's gate, let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. 
Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback to the street of the city and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate. But Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered. And Haman took Zeresh his wife and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him, if Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains and hasted to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. May I pray for someone here today? In the name that is above every other name. Everyone God has prepared as your destiny helper to work on your behalf. My God will take sleep off their eyes until you are settled in the name of Jesus. Now this story is such an interesting one. And it's a story we all know. On that particular night, the Bible said the king had trouble sleeping because a burden was laid in his heart. And then he went on and on. Mordecai had done something good in time past, which was not recognized. But on this particular day, the book of records was opened. And then there was a man who had been plotting to deal with the Jews. He was in the outer court and on this day that the king wanted to honor Mordecai his number one enemy was waiting you know to pass a message across to the king that will completely finish Mordecai and the Jews but then everything turned things will turn for someone here today you are that fellow shout a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Today we'll be speaking on the life transforming lessons from Esther. Life transforming lessons from Esther. I have quite a number, but in this first service we'll take maybe like three. And then we'll continue in the second service. Number one. Lesson number one. Stop running after men to help you. Instead, connect with the God that can do all things. Lesson number one. Stop running after men to help you. Instead, connect with the God that can do all things. In Psalm 146, verse 3, 5, and 6, New Living Translation. Psalm 146, verse 3, 5, and 6. It says, don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. But look at verse 5. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper. Whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. You can respect men, but don't, but don't put confidence in men. God is an orchestrator. He knows how to compel men to help you. And that's the, that's, that's the, that's, that's, that's the word you are going to take away from there. He knows how to compel men to help you. 
I learned this several years ago. And that was the last I ever, ever depended on any man. I've told you this story some time ago on this altar. And that day, you know, that experience taught me a very big lesson. I was in a final year with a colleague. In my final year, I was on scholarship in Uniben then. And then the scholarship money was so, I mean, was quite reasonable. After paying your fees and doing all of that, you still have enough change. And this was a colleague who the father just announced to him that, you know what, I don't have money to pay your bills anymore. It was in final year. And I met him, you know, sitting, he was so moody, feeling so bad. I asked him, young man, what's the problem? He said, the father just called. He sent a message to the dad to send him pocket money. And the father replied by saying, I have tried. Now that you are in your final year, just find a way of graduating and moving on with your life. And God just laid it in my heart. And I said to the young man, you know what? Don't worry. I still have some money on me. From now on, two of us will be going to the Bucateria together. I'll take care of your feeding, you know. But don't tell anybody. I told him that. Now, the burden became so strong that if I don't see this man, I can't go to the Buka to eat. Even if I'm hungry, I will wait for him because we have to go together. There was a day he went to read somewhere. And I was in the hostel at about six. I waited for this young man until nine. Until he came. My brother was staying with me in the same room. He said, are you not going to eat? I said, no, I'm, I will go when I'm ready. But I was waiting for him. We did that throughout the entire final year until he graduated. He did not go to any man. He went to God. God now compelled me to ensure that this young man graduates without having any challenge feeding. Let me pray for someone here today in the name that is above every other name. Your destiny helpers will be compelled to help you in the name of Jesus. So stop running after men. Ah. Stop. Stop. Connect with the God that can do all things. And that's why I tell people, when I hear people talking about, uh, you know, um, we set up a bank and some people are behind it. I laugh. A man of my level of understanding and connection with God. Let me pray for you again. In the name that is above every other name, God will raise men to help you. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. So lesson number one, stop running after men to help you. Instead, connect with the God that can do all things. Number two. Learn to do good works. Because your day of honor and dignity will surely come. I come again. Learn to do good works. Because your day of honor and dignity will surely come. 
In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Galatians 6, 9 and 10. Give it to me in NLT. Galatians 6, 9 and 10. It says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good. To who? Everyone. To who? Everyone. To who? Everyone. Especially to those in the family of faith. Do good to everyone. When Mordecai exposed the assassination plot of the two chamberlains, he wasn't expecting a reward. He just observed that, look, these young men were trying to do something evil, and he exposed their works. And he looked as if he's been forgotten. Let me tell you the truth. The book of remembrance, the book of records will always be open. <laughs> Joseph interpreted the dreams of the two aides of Pharaoh. For two years he was forgotten. And he looked as if this chapter is closed. Nothing, I mean, it cannot be opened up again. But when the day of remembrance and reward came, what was forgotten two years ago was rewarded with not just bringing him out of prison, he was put on the throne. Let me pray for someone here today. Your day of remembrance and reward will come speedily in the name of Jesus. So don't stop doing good. That's the message I'm passing across this morning. Don't get tired of doing good. Jonathan was the son of Saul. He knew that David was about to become the next king after his father. He saw it clearly. He knew that David was the one God had chosen. Meanwhile, he was supposed to be there. If the father remained, or if father lives to die on the throne, ordinarily he should succeed the father. But he formed an alliance, entered into a covenant with someone that, you know, was going to take over what belongs to him. And eventually, Saul died, Jonathan died. But then the good works of Jonathan remained indelible. That on that day, in 2 Samuel chapter 9, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, NLT, the Bible says, And David, one day, David asked, One day, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness? For who? Jonathan's sake. He didn't stop there. If you go to verse 2, he summoned Ziba. And he said, go and check. If there's anyone left, bring him here. I can't forget what Jonathan did. Your good works will always speak for you. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. So, the book of records will always be opened in your favor. And then you will enjoy divine advertisement. Yeah. One of the ways God can take you from where you are to where he wants you to be in life and in ministry is your good works. Will people abuse it? Yes, they will abuse it. Will you find cases where you have done something good for people and they pay you back with evil? Yes. It will happen again and again. Even in the church.
But will you now say you are not going to do good anymore? No. Tell your neighbor, don't get tired of doing good. <laughs> say it as if you mean it. Say it one more time. Because your reward will surely come. You receive that shout aloud, Amen. Amen. And let me say this. Even in your place of work, take ownership. The business may not be yours, but you know, do it as if it is yours. I only became an MD CEO just last year, officially. But as far back as when I was assistant general manager, I've been working as if I'm the owner of the bank where I work. That's the truth. My supervisors don't come to my territory because they know that there's someone here who is doing this work as if it's his father's work. But when the reward comes, it comes, you see, you know, it just blows your mind. You don't, you won't even see it coming. He that is faithful in little things shall be faithful with bigger things. God can only entrust bigger things to you when you have shown level of faithfulness with smaller things. So don't be discouraged. Do good to everyone. Everyone. Underline that word, everyone. Christians, Muslims, enemies, friends, do good to them. It only comes back and says, especially to those of the same faith. Because charity begins at home. I tell people that by the grace of God and with all sense of humility, the work I do today is because of the need to propagate the kingdom and to impact people's lives. If it's to eat, I'm not, I mean, people who know me how many times do I eat? By the grace of God, spices will be enough to feed me. If, if I don't eat bread, I eat rice. But everything is because God has laid a body in our heart. Do this for the kingdom. Do this to touch lives. And that's all. Someone asked me, what's the secret? In nine months, you have opened eight branches. And I said to them, the secret is this. this there's a covenant relationship with God. And I said to God, if in five years you make this bank number one, 90% of the profits will go to you and to humanity. So what you have seen is just the beginning because God is taking us somewhere. Don't forget the message. Do good to everyone. Don't get tired of doing good because the reward will surely come. You receive that shout aloud, Amen. Amen. The last one I will take, and I'll continue in the second service. Wickedness can never triumph over good. Excellence can never hide. I come again. 
Wickedness can never triumph over good. Lesson number three. Put a semicolon there. Excellence can never hide. Mordecai had exposed the plans of Bictana and Teresh. And on this day, the king could not sleep because God wanted Mordecai to be honored. And while that was about happening, Haman had packaged a report. He had done it so well, crafted it so well, to present to the king why Mordecai and the Jews, all of them must be completely killed and eliminated. He was waiting in the outer court to present his report. That's why I tell you, see, just connect with the God that can do all things. While he was thinking he had done a perfect job, God had placed a burden in the heart of the king to honor Mordecai. So he didn't have the chance to present his report. Because the day of honor had come for Mordecai. Anyone plotting by the corner to make a nonsense of what the Lord has planned to do for you, my God will frustrate them forever in the name of Jesus. And, you know, this, when I was reading this account, this point, I remembered something that happened like um, eight, nine years ago. Eight, nine years ago. They sent a team of uh, auditors or inspectors, I don't know what, I mean, yes, uh, you know, internal auditors to my region. So they came, they did their report, they put it together, and they were planning to submit to the MDCO. The same day they had planned to submit the report. If that report had reached the MD, quite a number of persons in my region would have been badly affected. Some would have even been, you know, uh, would, would have been disciplined, you know, severely. Because the people who came to do the report did not really understand the details. They were in a hurry to write their report. But on that particular day, the region had a major breakthrough. There was a particular relationship we've been trying to get for the bank for several years. It had not happened. But that day it happened. And the report got to the MD. So when the MD received the report, he announced promotion for the key staff in that region. And after he had announced, made that pronouncement, the internal auditors sent in their report. When he got it, he looked at it and he called me. He said, hey man, can you imagine? All the good works people are doing here, somebody wants to rubbish it. <laughs> May I pray for someone here? Anyone that will want to rubbish the good works that God is doing in your life, in your career, and in your destiny, my God will disgrace them in the name of Jesus. Wickedness can never triumph over good. Never. They will try, but they will fail. Haman was thoroughly disgraced. I'll speak more about this in the second service. The man he wanted to, to kill, not even disgrace. He now became the one to dress him up, package him well, and announce him to the people. May your enemies be the ones to announce you. <laughs> but remember the second thing I said, the excellence can never hide. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 20. Daniel chapter 1, verse 20. 
See what the scripture says about Daniel and his three uh, companions. Whenever the king consulted them in any matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them ten times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. Be good in whatever you do. Take it to the next level. Make it better. Make it best. And make it excellent. Nobody knew David until after he was anointed and he confronted Goliath and brought Goliath down. When you get to 1 Samuel chapter 18, 6 and 7, 1 Samuel 18, 6 and 7, the women started singing right in front of the king's palace. David has slain his ten thousands. 7 verse 7 verse 7. The women answered one another as they played. Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Reproach was taken out of the land because a young man showed up. What the king could not deliver to the people, David delivered. So at that point, you, there's nothing to hide anymore. He is the man. Christians and children of God, find your space. I say this as a slogan. Find your space. Be the best in your space. Be the best in your space. There's always room for you to be at your best. And once you are there, it doesn't matter what anybody does. Your star will surely shine. Yeah. Rise on your feet. Now just go ahead and begin to appreciate the Lord this morning. Father, I thank you. Because from now on, my trust, my confidence is in you. Lord, I thank you. Because every conspiracy of the enemy to stop me has been overturned today. I thank you because my good works will always speak for me. The book of remembrance of honor and dignity shall be opened. And my season of celebration will come speedily. Every grace that I need to excel in every area of my life, Father, release to me this morning. And every plans of the enemy to stop me from manifesting, from enjoying the rewards of your blessings, Father, overturn them this morning. Release fresh grace upon me to excel in every area of life. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In case you are here and you want to reconnect to your maker, you have heard this morning that you should put your trust and confidence in him. Maybe in some ways you have disconnected from him and you are saying, Father, here I am this morning. I make up my mind to reconnect with you again so that you will be my helper and you will compel destiny helpers to work on my behalf. You are that fellow, wherever you are, just lift up your right hand. I want to pray with you. Lift up your right hand. Upstairs, downstairs, extension. Lift up your right hand. I say, no, God, here I am. God bless you. I can see that hand up here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, if your hand is up, can you just come before the altar. Let me pray with you quickly. 
Just come. Just come. Just come. God bless you. Just come. Just come. Upstairs, the gallery, the extension, the overflow downstairs. Just come. Just come. The Lord is waiting for you. God bless 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 you. And set me free. God bless you. I'd like you to talk to the Lord. Ask him for his mercy. Ask for his mercy. Ask for his forgiveness. Ministers of God, please, let's stretch forth our hands towards our brethren and let's pray for, for them. Our God will show them mercy. If you are in the congregation and you know you are genuinely saved, please pray for them also. But the mercies of God will speak on their behalf. And God will save them to the altar most and release fresh grace to be reconnected to him. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you for your children standing before your altar this morning. They have decided to follow you. They have made up their minds to reconcile with you. Lord, I thank you for their lives and for this decision that they have taken. I pray that you have mercy on every one of them. Forgive all their sins. Cleanse them with your blood. Write their names in the book of life. And by reason of this decision they have taken, release fresh grace upon them all to reconnect with you and to serve you for the rest of their lives. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, let's clap for them as they go to the counselor. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Amen. Now, please rise on your feet now. Stretch forth your hands towards the altar. In the next one to two minutes, I'd like you to lay a demand on this service. What are you expecting from the Lord? What area of your life would you want Him to focus on? What is that challenge that you need Him to deal with? What is that prayer request that you want the Lord to settle for you this morning? In the next one to two minutes, without being distracted, just go ahead and ask him now. While we are praying that prayer, Is there anyone here that is sick in any part of his or her body? Or you probably want special prayers while the rest of us are praying on our seats. Please quickly come before the altar. You are sick. You have very special needs that you, you require me to join you in the place of prayers. Just come before the altar. The rest of us, 
stay where you are and talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Pass me not, O gentle said to us this morning that God is our helper and we should put our trust in him. God will send help to you. Amen. You believe that, shout a better amen. amen. Maybe in 30 seconds, just talk to the Lord about that challenge. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you are sick in any part of your body, just lay your hands on that part of the body. There are quite a number. I can't lay my hands on all of you now. Just place your hand on that part of the body as I pray for the congregation and then I pray for you also. Thank you, Lord. It's too early to be seated now. Can you stand wherever you are? I'm about to pray. Father in heaven, behold your sons and your daughters standing before your altar. They have placed their hands on where it pains them, trusting you for their healing and trusting you for your intervention. Lord, I join my faith with all of these, your children, and I pray in the name that is above every other name, whatever sickness, whatever ailment that followed them to church this morning, I command you out in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. And all of you that came out here believing God for some special things in your lives, I pray from this altar of power the God with whom nothing shall be impossible the God that overturns even when all hopes may have been lost Father all of these special requests all of these challenges that your children have come out to express before your altar my Father and my God. Between now and the end of this month, let there be major testimonies. For the ones that you need to deal with urgently, 
Father, within the next 24 hours, let the tides turn in their favor in the name of Jesus. Answer all their prayers. Wipe away their tears. Turn things around in their favor. And let them return with testimonies. I pray for the entire congregation. The children have come here expressing themselves before you on this prosperity Sunday. Daddy, you are looking out for divine treasurers. People you will empower financially and will become instruments to drive your kingdom agenda and to impact lives. My Father and my God, in this church, even right now, I ask in the name that is above every other name, that amongst these your children, you will find such in the name of Jesus. Chase away every form of poverty in our midst. Give us divine ideas that will single us out in our generation. Open new doors to us. Enlarge our coasts. Take us to greater heights. Lord, I pray that very, very soon, amongst all of these, your children will be lending to many nations. So shall it be. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Go ahead and celebrate Jesus. It is done. Is that all you can do? Put your hands together for the King of Kings. Amen. Amen.